My name is Richard Lucas, and I appreciate this opportunity to explain my research project for the American Revolution. Propaganda and persuasion have played a pivotal role in America's wars since the founding of the Republic. The debate between revolutionary forces and the Tories or Loyalists was rife with moral and ethical ambiguities that addressed core questions of loyalty and natural rights. The arguments presented for and against independence from Great Britain had to rely on a common foundation of Christian belief expressed in the words of the Old and the New Testaments. Both sides of the independence question employed the gospel and the biblical verse to support their positions in persuasive texts. Propagandists for both the Loyalist and Revolutionary causes employed God's word to not only provide support for their positions, but to provide a stable foundation for their arguments. While the concept of propaganda is a 20th century notion, persuading those colonists still loyal to Britain and reluctant to part with the crown was necessary. Naturally, the Tories who refused to bend, employed their own persuasive means to counsel against the schism. Each viewpoint used central scriptural texts and themes to undergird their positions. For instance, John J. Zubli, a Presbyterian minister from Savannah, complained against the Stamp Act using Joshua 22, in which the prophet resolved of dispute between the tribes of Israel and compared it to the dispute between the colonies and their masters in the British Isles. The revolutionary era was born out of the courage to dissent and the Protestant Christian Church enabled the messages to disseminate far and wide. Sermons were printed as pamphlets, Newspapers reprinted excerpts, and despite great distance and poor transportation, difficult roads, the message was remarkably similar, both in favor and against separation. One of the reasons for the similarity was the fact that many polemicists of the time pursued a, s a sort of theological refuge in Holy Scripture as the basis of their argument. The controversy of whether the American colony should separate from the British crown raised important questions about man's relationship to God, man's relationship to the king, and therefore his obedience to the king, is it the same as obedience to God, and man's rela relationship to his fellow man and his fellow countrymen. The loyalist argument had no greater authority than that of the Apostle Paul in Romans 13, 1, where Paul says, Let every soul be subject to the, unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Loyalist Anglican pastors such as Thomas Bradbury Chandler cautioned on the eternal consequences of disobedience to God's ordained powers. In his 1774 pamphlet, The American Querist, he wrote, quote, whether on the contrary he does not commend us to submit to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, and require us on pain of damnation to be duly subject to the higher powers and not to resist their lawful authority. End quote. Other loyalists, such as the Reverend Samuel Seabury uh, and uh, Jonathan Boucher, uh, also uh, use scripture to defend the loyalist cause. At the same time, pamphleteers like Thomas Paine used, used scripture and the idea 
of the God, of God as a providential reason to overthrow the monarchy. Although he was a deist, Payne referred to Judges 8 to provide a comparison between the oppression of the Israelites by the Midianites to the British oppression of the colonists. In it, he writes, the children of Israel being oppressed by the Midianites, Gideon marched against them with a small army and victory, though the divine interposition or providence decided in his favor. The Jews, elate with success and attributing to, to the generalship of Gideon, proposed making him a king, saying, Rule thou over us, thou and thy son and thy son's son. Yet Gideon, in the piety of his soul, replied, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. To buttress his argument against the divine right of the monarch, Thomas Paine pointed to the story of King Saul. Quote, that the Almighty hath here entered his protest against monarchical government is true, or else the scripture is false. I hope you found uh, this research interesting, and thank you.